let me rephrase that question. Because <laughs> I'm sure you can come up with some good answers. What specifically did I do wrong here? Go ahead. Well, I wasn't paying attention, but I'm guessing you forgot to check master page. Yeah, I apparently wasn't paying attention either. All right, because yes, I forgot to, to check that there's a master page involved. So let's go to new, file, default. Yes, I do want to select the master page. I just need to do that for the first, and it will default for that for the second. And which master page? This one. All right, I thought that was going too quick. New file. Programming. New file. Networking. New file. cloning the, the one master page that I created. You could though, right? Sometimes. I could. If I thought, for example, the stuff in the programming section, I wanted to have, uh, you know, different. You know, I have two main sections of networking and, uh, and the programming. If I thought that I wanted the, the pages in the programming area look different than the pages in the network area, have an additional content, yeah, I could do it. But I sort of decided this was small enough where I really didn't need to do that. So two more. By the way, don't include spaces in your anything URL-wise. There's always a potential for goofiness with that because again, that's not a legit character. So use underscores or dashes or whatever. And finally, for now and then we'll fill in the rest later. Now remember I have to create an ASPX page to view this in the browser. Right, because I can't view a master page in the browser. So I have to go in and make at least one of these um, as we go in. So here we go. Copy this text and I'll make my one home page. And again, I can only put contact in, or content in the content tag because that corresponds to the master page's placeholders. So that's the only place that I have a blank. All right, there's only two blanks on this page. There is the, um, there is the uh, a blank in a header if I had some special CSS code, if I had some special JavaScript for this page, or other stuff, I could put it in there. Um, and then there's a, a content placeholder for the body that I can fill with this. We go in and put and I'll put an H3 here. 
it says home page and I'm ready to go. I can run this and if I look here's my home page. structure and all that. Now we're ready to create the navigation. All right. Now we're ready to create the navigation. Now, there are three things that are relevant here. Three components, I guess, that are relevant here. And we'll, we'll look at all of them. And again, we might get to them all today. We might have a straggler for next week. There is a menu, there's a tree view, and then there's a site map path. The site map path is what's commonly known as breadcrumbs. Okay. Now we're going to go and we're going to do an example. First we're going to do an example of a menu, then we're going to do an example of a tree view, then we'll do the site map path, and then we're going to go back and redo a menu and or tree view because we're going to learn something when we do the site map path that we can go back and we can do a better job on those. All right. What's the difference between a menu and a tree view? Well, this is going to be more easily seen and explained. Now, I might put both of them on this page, but know that you don't really need to have both of these in your navigation. I, I, just for demonstration purposes, so that you can put, look at them side by side, I might, I might copy the one. Uh, uh, you know, I might, might have both of them on the same page. Let's start by creating a menu. All right. Now, this menu, I want to appear on every page. So I will go to the master page. And I will drag over that menu control over here. And I can then go and edit the menu items. This is very this is similar to what we did when we created a dropdown, right? When we created a dropdown, we went and we, we set the dropdown's items. Alright? Here we're going to set the menu items. Now Notice right off the bat, something that you might not like is that the menu is oriented vertically. All right. We'll go and we'll change. Oh, actually, no, we do like that. Right. I forgot what we were doing here. Um, we do like uh, the, uh, the, it's okay for the menu to be oriented uh, vertically. The one thing I did do, though, is I think I put it in the wrong spot. I, don't, I didn't, didn't put it in the content nav. So let me go back and fix that. We could just change it with CSS if we didn't like the vertical. Or one. No. Um, you could you could change it um, with properties of the control. It would probably be the easier way. You can set some CSS for this, and we'll see examples of how to do that at some point. Okay, so there I moved it to be here. All right, that's more like it. That's where I want it. Is that what you? Yeah, yeah, I was, didn't understand where you put it. Yeah, I, I mistakenly when I dragged it, I dropped it into the content placeholder instead of instead of here. All right, let's go and edit menu items. And what I can do is I got this button to add a menu item. Now there's one page that's considered to be the root of it, or or actually, I'm mistaken. All right. You can have multiple uh, roofs, I believe. Yeah, you can have multiple roofs. I was mistaken about that. I might be confusing with, I'm confusing that with something else. All right. We have a text uh, item, and we have the URL that we want to navigate to. 
So our first page is going to be home. And the URL to navigate to is default.aspx. All right. Pretty simple. Now, if we think of the structure of this, you can actually have multiple root items. But if you think of the structure, the way I have it set up on the board, it's like a hierarchy. The home page is at the top. Underneath it are the two pages, networking and programming. And underneath those, there's other pages. So I'm going to go and I'm going to add a child element to this menu. And the first one I'm going to add is for programming. And the URL, URL for that is programming.aspx. I always do that. And I can add another child a home for networking. If you mess up and add something on the wrong level, you can always change that around. You can promote and demote, and you can rearrange and all that. So don't, don't panic if you put things in the wrong place. All right. Now, underneath programming, if you remember, there's three pages. So I'll add a child to programming. And it will be mobile. Add another child for web. Another child, child for software. So we have the three degrees programs underneath programming. We can then go and add the two pages underneath networking too by going in and clicking child and putting in, what was the first one, networking associates. right now, which right now only shows the home because the home is the only thing at the root level. We can go and we can change that if, if we want, and there's a couple ways we can change that. Let's go and run this page. Let's go and run the default page and take a look at what that menu looks like. So, I go and mouse over that, and up comes those other two options my mouse over that and up comes those three options. Or I can mouse over networking and see that other option. Now, you notice something we're going to address at some point, the fact that if we go to networking, the word associate interferes with the word home page. So we'll address that at some point. But we can see how we have a nice little menuing system. Mouse over that, we see the things that are underneath the home page. Mouse over programming, we see the things that are in the programming section. Mouse over networking, we see the things in the networking section. So we get all that functionality for free, right? Just by virtue of us creating it. Now, we can set any number of different parameters associated with this menu. One of them we can do is we can choose how many levels we want to see to start. 
So we could see all three levels of the menu, or we could see just the first level, like we're doing now, or we could see the second level, or the first and second level. And that seems to be a good approach for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here, and on my menu, there's this whole list of properties over here. And one of those properties is static display levels. In other words, how many levels will it always show? And it will always show at least one level. To see the other levels now, you have to mouse over. I'm going to change this to say always display two levels. And now if we look at our menu, we have home, and then we have programming and networking. So we see the top level and the first level of child. Yeah? Was that static display levels property choice in the same set of choices as where you changed the navigate URL? Or was it no, because this is, no, because if we look at this, associated with a menu is a whole set of menu options. So here's a bunch of menu options associated with, with that. And we can go and we can add our menu options and so on. How many levels we show isn't a property of any of those options. It's a property of the menu as a whole. So if I click on the menu and look over here for the properties of that menu, one of the things is static display level. Here is, by the way, where we can set the orientation to horizontal if we want, somewhere. Yeah, orientation, we could set it to vertical or horizontal. Horizontal looks like it's still vertical, but that's just because we are in a, a very narrow div. If we pulled that up somewhere else, then if we made the width of that uh, div um, 100%, which we can do for demonstration purposes, we'll see now that the menu is oriented horizontal. But I don't want this div to be 100%, and I don't want the menu to be oriented horizontally. So I'll go here, and I'll set the menu to be oriented vertically. And we have a choice to choose between tables or unordered lists. Um, we all know from our web standards work that a table should only be used for a table, so we're not going to use tables. All right. So now if we run this, again, we get essentially the same thing before, except it's showing two levels at a time. I'm sorry, it's showing two levels initially. And then we put our mouse over that, and we get this. Put our mouse over that, and we get that. And we click on any of these, we get taken to that page. Now, I don't have anything on these pages yet, but it, again, in the interest of time, you can imagine if we filled that in, you know, we'd see the programming stuff, or we'd see the mobile stuff, or the networking acronym stuff. Ah, I type out the name of the file, let's go in and correct that. Dashboard should be a period. So that fixes that. All right. So that's a menu view. If we don't like the way the items are, we can promote or demo. What I mean is, for example, if we wanted mobile to be on the same level as programming, 
I could promote it to be on that level. Or I could demote it back. I can also rearrange it to put it where I want to on the list using those arrows. Again, this is just something that's best just to play with. And you'll, um, you'll, you'll get the hang of it. Let's do a tree view now. All right. And a tree view is real similar to a menu. drag that tree view over. Or I can go in here, and I can go in here, whoops, and edit the nodes, and effectively do the same thing as I did here. So I could put home page here, and the URL is default uh, ASPX. I'm just going to go and do a couple of nodes on this tree. I'm not going to do the whole tree. All right. Or maybe I will. I guess it's not that long. I can go and add a child for programming. Maybe it's a branch. It's a tree. Pardon me? Maybe it's a branch, not a child. If it's a tree, yeah, view. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Well, it's not necessarily a branch. It could be a leaf, right? <laughs> Seriously. Because uh, a branch implies that there's stuff coming off of the branch. A leaf indicates that it's, it's an end node. Uh, a no, uh, in, 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 in terminology, both branches and leaves are nodes of the tree. Maybe I'm thinking about this. A child could be a parent. child can be a parent, absolutely. So a branch can have other branches, and it can be the child of a branch as well. Essentially, we're doing the same thing. Unfortunately, we can't just copy and paste from our menu view because these are actually different objects. These are nodes instead of uh, menu items. But it's not too long doing this.
leave that in, but just for consistency to say, because I didn't put any other ones in taking it out. All right, so now we go and we have a tree view. And really we'll see the difference between a tree view and a menu view. The tree view is such that we can expand or contract the nodes and they stay expanded or contracted. All right. So if I go and say I want to expand the programming node, the programming node stays open. All right. As opposed to the programming menu item, it only shows when I mouse over it. If I move, pull the mouse away, then it disappears. All right. Other than that, it works the same. What happens when you mouse over programming, for example? Programming in the menu or on the, in tree? the tree? view, okay. If you put your mouse over it, it does. You just get the pointer change to a finger indicating that you can click on it and it's a link. And then and if you click it's on not it. as obvious this way that there's content. Well, I don't know. I, don't that's, know. That's the way they all work, I don't know. I, I guess I would I would I would consider your 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 problem domain, your topic. Does it make sense to have a tree and expand it and and leave it expanded? Yes. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'm not thinking this through. Does that does that affect like accessibility for people? I mean, I don't know. I always prefer that it stays expanded or contracted. Um, if it's hard for someone to mouse over because they have like yeah, I suppose. Issues. I, I suppose that would be a consideration. Um, I don't know. There's value to both. You know, the technical aspect is how you make both of them. Now that you have that down, you can use your design sensibility to come up with. Um, with um, you know what's right for your particular problem. Now again, do remember, you know, when I did this example in previous semesters, you know, I got about fifty percent of my assignments had both a menu view and a tree view. No, you don't need to do that. You pick one. All right, you pick one for your navigation. Now, if I'm not mistaken, you can still set some parameters for the tree view. You can set parameters such as um, let's see. show lines between the menu items or the tree items. It shows the tree more obviously. You can give a height and width. You can put character used to separate parts of the path, leaf style. Yeah. There's parameters associated with these as well. One thing that we didn't talk about today that we, we will talk about in the future is, is styling these things. Um, this is where .NET can be confusing because there's a few ways that you can style things. And some of it comes down to personal preference, some of it comes down to what's more effective, and so on. You just, you just have to make some choices as far as that goes. All right. So what do we have left in this section? We have to talk about the site map and the site map path. All right. We also then have to talk about styling these things. We also have to talk about binding these things. Binding is soon to become a very important concept in this class. All right. I just went in and 